sources. Not only did I give you the, the, last, non- the source not, you just gave in the I gave you two sources. Not only did I give you the Zondervan Bible Dictionary, but I also gave you the Merriam Webster's Dictionary. Now, back to what I was saying before I was rudely interrupted yet again by you, Laron, because you know I'm at your neck. So now, um, so now basically breaking down what he was stating about the context of the word, right? Because remember, he wanted to quote in Matthews when it says he shall give salvation or he shall save his people. Well, if I was to say, who's Bruce Lee's people? All of you are going to say the Chinese. You're not going to include anyone else. So if I was to, if I was to turn around and say any race of people, if I was to say Akon's people, I'm going to say the Africans. But if I say Christ now, all of a sudden, it doesn't apply to the Jews. It doesn't apply to Israelites. Well, let's just find out if that's true. And let's read a little bit more about salvation, shall we? So I'm going to start at Luke chapter one, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Of who? Of Israel. Of all nations? No, of Israel. For he hath visited and redeemed his people. There's a possessive pronoun again, much like Christ saved his people. What was Christ? He was a Jew, an Israelite, and hath raised up an horn of salvation. Now, remember, I told you earlier, horns represent the peak of the government. You understand? A, a horn of salvation in the house of his servant, David. For who? For Israel. Because we're talking about Israel being redeemed. We're talking about salvation being for Israel. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the, the world begun, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. You know what that sounds like? All those nations you were talking about collectively as the dragon being destroyed and then salvation comes because the dragon was trying to kill the woman that is Israel that you couldn't break down or you forgot the breakdown or you failed to mention they were the other nations or you just refused to because you know I'm coming for you. So now we see that it's all in the context of Israel being saved by enemies. And we're showing that the nations are the enemy, even in a metaphorical fashion as a dragon to perform the mercy promised to our fathers. This is a family affair. And to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to Father Abraham, that he would grant unto us. See how all of this is inclusive to Israel? No other nation has been mentioned in any of this talk about salvation, that we being delivered out the hand of our enemies, the other nations, might serve him without fear and holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And that thou child shall be called the prophet of the highest, for the Lord God shall shall go before the face of, excuse me, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people, since you wanted to pull it up, by the remissions of their sins. This whole chapter has been about what? Israel. Who's his people? Israel. Who's remission for? Israel. Who's salvation for? Israel. None of this, even when I get to the end of the chapter and the child grew, what child? Christ, and waxed strong in spirit and was in the desert until the days of his showing onto Israel. So now we're starting to see that even in the context of being saved from other nations, what do these other nations have to be saved from? Well, I believe that you answered that inside of, of Revelations, the 20th chapter, but here's the thing that he didn't tell you. See, he wanted to go into Psalms and Psalms is almost, you know, it's, it's, it's in the ballpark. It's in the pond. You understand of, of relevance, right? But what he refused to do was go to Isaiah where revelations that he quoted from is actually being paraphrased from is actually being quoted. So since we're talking about this, right, let's go now to Isaiah and let's find the context of those nations in that chapter that you were talking about that I said were being spared from destruction because Israel was being saved from their enemies and redeemed. But these other nations, what what are they saved for? I, 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 wonder, if, I wonder if the Bible answers this. I really do, right? So now that we're going to, uh, uh, you know what? Boom. So let's go to Isaiah 60 because Isaiah 60 is quoting the the, uh, revelations, the 20th chapter that he was talking about. Because remember, the gates shall be open. They shall bring the tribute. 
So now, Isaiah 60, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be upon thee and the Gentiles shall come to thy light and king's brightness of thy rise. And oh God, doesn't it sound so poetic? Lift up thine eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy son shall come far and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and flow together and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea shall be converted onto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come on to thee. What he read earlier, we're reading about here as it was prophesied by Isaiah. The multitude of the camels shall cover thee. So now it's talking about everything that's going to be brought. The riches, you know what I'm saying? The flock, so on and so forth. Glory his house, right? So now I'm going to drop down to nine. Surely the isles shall wait for me and the ships of Tarshish first to bring thy sons from far their silver and their gold with them onto the name of the Lord thy God and the Holy One of Israel because he hath all glorified thee. So what we're seeing is these other nations, right? are paying tribute. Let's continue. Verse 10, and the sons of the strangers, the other nations, shall build thy walls, and their king shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in favor I've had mercy on thee. So the mercy is for us to be redeemed from our enemies, and now they are going to face a judgment and a penalty. Therefore, thy gates shall be conti open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles and that their kings might be brought. Why? Because they're serving Israel. Now, he did mention that these nations were saved from something, saved from some kind of destruction. Let's find out what it is. Verse 12, for the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. So the context of what you read is talking about the nations that didn't fight back against Christ, that decided not to side with the dragon, but pay tribute, but serve Israel. That's a part of the redemption. That's a part of the salvation. Now, lastly, and I tried to keep this as short, sweet, succinct as possible. The last thing that he was talking about is, well, what was then this, this arm of salvation and that they might be glorified? And notice that scripture never said anything about teaching other nations. He brought that up. He mentioned that. But outside of this, because this gave perfect context and clarity, maybe it needs just a little bit of reinforcement. So as a result, and... Most Christians deny the Old Testament, even though the chapter in Revelations he was talking about quoted it perfectly. But because of that, I'm going to go back to Romans. I'm going to go back to Romans and I'm going to go to Romans, back to the ninth chapter. Love this chapter. So the context of what we're talking about here, right, is that Paul wanted mercy and had continual sorrow in his heart for Israel. Chapters Israel. And then if we come down, right. And it says, let's drop down to 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. I don't know about you. I love what God loves. I hate what he hates. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a loyal servant. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Who, who am I to not love what God hates? That's crazy to me. But what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on them. Will I have mercy? And I will have compassion on them who I will have compassion. So it's up to the Lord to decide who he has mercy on and whom he destroys, right? So he is going back and forth explaining how he's comparing all of this to Egypt. Why? You understand? Because let me, 17, for the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this purpose have I raised thee up, that I might shew my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. So you wanted to know how his name is going to be declared throughout all the earth, why he's going to be served, because the nations like Pharaoh was destroyed. They're going to build our walls. They're going to be beaten into a position of submission. That's how they're going to serve. The same way when Israel left Egypt and then you, you found them cats that was bringing the water and the wood hewers and stone hewers. Why? What was that about? Because they said, we heard what your God did to the Egyptians. We don't want to be destroyed either. Please let us serve you. That's a foreshadowing of what you're reading here, that the reason why that's going to be declared in the earth, how his mercy is going to be shown is because it's shown 
on to Israel. It's the same way Pharaoh was raised up to be destroyed. That dragon, these other nations are raised up to be destroyed that Israel can receive salvation. As we read in Luke, the first chapter, as we read in Revelations, the 12th chapter, 13th chapter, as we're reading about now in Romans, the ninth chapter. And you know what we call that? A body bag. Rest in peace. Where did, right, you uh, get, where, where did he get this stuff from, man? Well, hold on real quick. Who, me, who, uh, where, hold on, let me read. Where is this doctor from? Who is it? Hold on, you, uh, Deacon, you got to mute up and let fact. LeBron not respond. Now, uh, I'm glad y'all heard this because me and what's going to have something in common now. I told this brother already that me and him got something in common. And what we both got in common Everybody heard this brother just admit from the ISUPK that Gentiles can be saved. He just admitted it. They lost. Over with. He just admitted it that Gentiles can be saved. Now, no matter how he feels on how God is going to save them, in the text, he just said, yeah, they're saved for this. He just admitted that they can be saved. I got something else for him. We both agree that they can be saved. We must we definitely disagree that what happens when they get saved so let me bring out some stuff to you to show y'all how this brother just admitted it debate over with and he know he just lost it he just said it yes they will be saved but they're going to be saved to serve <laughs> but they say though no, you just admitted it game over look what it says here this is Revelations 21, and I'm going to go right here to 27. I got a question for you, uh, Katasai. You know what I'm saying? Look what it says here. Hey, Leron, it says, before, before you do that, I, j I just want to show. I just want to show, right? Even hey, on, after brother, all that. No, real quick. You just talked. No, 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 brother. You just I talk, still answered talk. your question, and you never answered one of mine. I don't even think you should be allowed Hold to on, answer just, ask hey, me hey, questions it, it, no it more. It don't matter. It, it do. Don't matter. Okay, well, you know, I'm not going to ask you. I'm not gonna ask you. I'm not gonna ask ask you any questions. You're trying to get stubborn. Because you don't answer now, questions. Because you don't answer you're trying questions. Trying to get stubborn but now, ahead. but hey, but listen, hey, listen. Show that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But look what it says. Now watch this. You're gonna get stubborn because that's how they get. It says, and there shall in no wise enter into anything that defile it, right? Neither whatsoever work of abomination and make a lie, but they which are written. And the Lamb's book of life. Now, notice it says that anybody that's entering into this city, right, they can't enter into that city unless their name is written in the Lamb's book of life. So, for the audience out there, yeah, once again, it's G Con, uh, you know, y'all already know. The text says that these fellas that enter into this new Jerusalem, this new heaven and new earth, right? which you have to be born again to enter therein, it clearly states here, you can't enter into this place only uh, 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 until you have uh, been saved. And it says your name must be written in the last book of life. Now, I want to jump up right here to when it talks about this city. It's so beautiful that uh, I'm going to enter in because I'm a big Hamite. You know what I'm saying? Look what it says here. Now, this is... Revelations 21, and I'm going to jump right here to uh, 22. Pause. I got you. It says, uh, and uh, not that, that ain't that, but that is that. That ain't that, though. So, yeah, pause. Uh, and I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God, God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. I got a question for you guys, for your, your, the, those who don't want to be stubborn in here. When it says for the temple of it, what is the it there that is talking about? If y'all don't mind me asking, what is that talking about? What is the temple of it? And that what is the it that's in that text right there? It says, "Cut does I want to be stubborn." What's this? What, what verse is that? What scripture? Matter of fact, that's what, uh, what? Revelation 21 and 22. What is the it right there? When it says the temple of it, what is that talking about? What is it? Start at verse 12, I'll tell you. I'm asking you, bro, what's the temple of it right there? That's all I ask you. What is it? Just be precise. Let your yay be yay, your nay be nay. What is no, it? No, wait, hold on. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
Leron, you cannot go there. You cannot say Thank you. answer it precise and concise because you haven't done that. That's the you can't do that. If he wants to answer how he wants to answer it, that's fine. I'm just speaking from a moderator point of view. You haven't answered a yay or nay. You haven't answered that way this whole time. So don't right, so do that. It is don't a city. The, the, it is a city, and don't go full Ed Maya on me. Don't do that because that's what you're doing now. But you, now you now you want to go Eddie on me now. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just answering straight with it, Leron, city, you haven't answered simple, nothing bro. straight. Yes, I have, because the the city right there is the is the city. I mean, the temple right there. I mean, the it that is talking about right there is the the city. That's what it is. That's all he had to say. You know what I'm saying. So let's y'all ready read for down. the clap back? Uh, yeah, yeah, all right, yeah, right, let's read down. So let's read down. Who says? Just, le- just let me know when you finish, Leron. Hey, you already did conceded already. You're to your position. They're gonna be saved regardless. Bro, I'm talking to somebody in the reincarnation. You a dead man. Like, I don't even know why why you're here. You you might as well be like the Calvinists and just start making up the defining, making up definitions and stuff. Because you did that when you came to that. uh, Here's another thing, too. When he came to that, when he talked about the heaven. This boy's a white walker. Hold on. I got you, bro. If anybody white, it's your skin. It ain't got nothing to do with me, though. So and, anyway, and the funny part is, you fight to save them, so I don't even know and why you're bringing that good. up. So I'm sa- and I'm saving you right now. Let me say you. You, you love saying? white people, like vocab me, alone. Right, your so father. Let me, save you, let me save you right now, bro. So let's talk let about it. Save, let me save you right now. How's vocab? All right, go ahead. So let me go. See, notice he's trying he try to. <laughs> all right, so listen. So listen. In this text, right, he tries to talk about the hell in there. Was crazy. Notice he never went to the actual Greek that was there in the text. He went to the Zonovan, like Zonovan speak Greek. You know what I'm saying? What, what is he doing? I'm saying he didn't go to the Thayers nor to the Strongs or none of that. Because if you read the text, it says that word is talking about a non, is specifically, especially a non Israelite or a non Jew. It says especially a non Jew. So he, I don't know why he tried to. He, he tried to go to that and act like that's going to trump when Thayers. I mean, uh, 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 Zonovan, Zonovan didn't speak no Greek. Do stop it. So then let's go right here to Revelations and go to the it there and let's continue to read. Look what it says here. Start at verse 10. Go to 10 hey, to 12. Hey, hold on, bro. Don't tell me where to start at. Let 10 to 12 is verse, bro. The it. I didn't. Hey, listen. Yeah, look, I got Tony, you. just kind of mute up. Let him, let him, let him mute continue up, to brother. do it. All right, so look. Right there. Now, hold on for a minute. Real quick. Now. Let's jump, let's jump, uh, let's jump right here to 2020, uh, because he kind of threw me off a little bit. That's why I don't be liking for these brothers to be trying to. All right, so look what it says here. 23 going to tell you the it right there. I can start right here. I ain't even got to go up. I'm going to start right here. And the city had no se- uh, no need of the sun. So the it right there is talking about the city. Look what it says. To shine in it, the city. That's simple, man. He's like, oh, go everybody. <laughs> but look what it says here. For the glory of God did lighten it. That's what it says. It. It's talking about the city. It says, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved should walk in the light of it. So I got a question. When it says the light of it, what is that talking about? When it says they're going to walk in the light of it, Right, walk in the light of it. That's talking about the city. They're gonna walk in the light of the city, right? So let's look at what it says here. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory, and honor into it, into the city. You know what I'm saying, look what it says. And the gates of it of the city shall not be shut, right, all, all by day. For there shall be no light, right. There should be no light there. I mean, I'm sorry. Let's see. There should be no. Let me make sure. I don't from there. For there should be no night there. That's what it says. There should be no night there. And they should bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. Right? That's what it says. And there in no wise, in no wise, enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever work of abomination or make of a lie. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Now, let's look and see whose names are written in this Lamb book of life or who gonna enter into this city 
uh, uh, is is this just talking about Israelites, or is it talking about the nations just as well too? And remember, this is the new heaven and the new earth. So anything that's born into this new earth, having a new earth, and born into the kingdom of God, must be born again. That's that's the, that's a fact. You can't get past that. You got to be born again to enter into the kingdom of God. Look what it says here. This is uh, um, 22, Revelation 22, right? And one, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God, of the Lamb, in the midst of the street of it, and on the other side of the city, on the other side, I mean, and on the either side of the river, right? Was there a tree of life? Now. Let's look and see who has right to the tree of life, not just the Israelites. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> What's going on here? Look what it says here. It says, which bear 12 manner of fruits and yielded her fruits every month, right? Watch what it says. And the leaves, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of what? The nations. So God wants to heal the nations. That's what the text is saying. So when you look at one of those words this of so so or to save, that's the healing is one of them. So then when you go back to that uh, Psalm 67 and it says that thy saving health, that's talking about healing and wholeness. Now, to prove that and to prove my point, it says for the healing of the nations, right? It says, and there shall be no more curse. Now, what was the curse? Was the curse just on the Israelite? Katasa? Hell no, it wasn't just on the Israelite. The whole creation has been experiencing. Did he cut out? Did he crash? I hope not. Yeah, he cut out. Yeah, I'm just waiting to respond because, like, once again, the clapback is about to be vicious. Yeah. I, uh, you done? No, I'm not done yet. What are you talking about? Uh, okay, you long. You saying nothing, bro. You just bumping your gums at this point. All right, well, go ahead. Well, you ain't got to like it. You talk for damn near 15 minutes. Because I had a lot to cover, I, and everything I said right, was so, so, response so, hey, brother, to what you said, hey, and you haven't hey, addressed hey, hey, nothing listen, I've I, said. I, I, hold on, nothing. stop for a minute. Nothing. You seem like your skin getting super red right now. You know what I'm saying? So calm down, brother. Man, oh, me oh you mean like your daddy, Vocab Malone? Hey, hey, how vocab is he? darker than you. How, how is Vocab? You know so calm down, Harry Rosenberg. Man, let let me, me know. Finish. Tell me, how is he? I know you ain't talking, Toby. Do hey, I need to get a white finish, man in here Harry. so you'll read? Read, Toby. Hey, is y'all going to stop this, brother? And that stop shit is cut me off funny. Y'all kept muting me, and Harry keep cutting me you off. You cut out, and I was just asking if you done yet. Hey, Harry, let me finish, brother, because when All I right, cut Toby. back in, Toby. Come on, Toby. cut me off. Now, come on, Toby. Now, Harry. Now, go ahead. Hold on, Salaki. Salaki, Laurent, you had you had cut out. I don't know if you uh, understood. It was like it just dropped out, and we couldn't hear you at all. So that was like about when I twenty came seconds. Back in, he still I know. On. Laron, can you hear me? I heard you. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm saying once you came back in, that's when y'all got into it. But you was acting as if he was interrupting you. So I was just kind of letting you know he wasn't interrupting you. It's just we all thought you stopped or dropped out of the room or whatever the case may be. So he started speaking in that time frame. So of course y'all already had a contentious energy going back and forth. So that's what that was. And as soon as I got, was able to get to the phone, I just kind of, you know, brought it to a cease. So both of you brothers got off. Uh, Laron is on you to finalize whatever you're going to say, land your plane, and then you guys can continue to build. All right, cool. Appreciate it. So, right. You notice it says in this text, it's for the healing of the nations. It says, uh, and y'all can go look up that word Helen if y'all want to, right there in the text, which he tried to bypass the uh, the Greek word there. You know what I'm saying? And went into the Zondervans and, and, and uh, the Webster Bible. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the Webster Dictionary. Instead of going right to the Greek and looking at the meaning and reading that because he knew he was going to get cut. I gave two sources. But why he didn't go to the primary source, the Greek and the number is right there. Why you didn't do that, Katasai? 
You know what I'm saying? Because you know already you was cut in that text. So look what it says here, right? It says, and there should be no more curse, right? But the throne of God and the Lamb should be in it, right? And his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, his name should be in their foreheads. Now, what I want y'all to focus in on is this before I land. Now, if you go right here to Isaiah, I mean, uh, what is it? It's going to be Isaiah, I'm sorry, Psalms 22 and 27. It's going to be a cold cut right here. And I don't mean the sandwich. Just don't run when you get through. I ain't running. I don't duck no smoke at all. They'll tell you about it. Brothers that know me in here, I'm always on you. I'm like Jesus. I'm going to all your synagogues. I'm up in them pieces, turning over tables. You know what I'm saying? To like you, Laurent, Laurent, you, you got it. Who is that there, Interject? Who is that? Oh, this Tony. I didn't, I didn't crush Laurent several times. He, this I, I understand movie. Tony on the God First Game platform. You don't interject. So yes, Laron and Kautz's eyes actually having a conversation. There's no need to respond to anything that he says. He has the right to say what he would like to say on his time frame as long as he quote and cite the Bible book chapter verse. So he's saying what he want to say. He has that right on his platform. So if you can, just mute up and allow the captain to have a conversation with him. Laron will yield soon, so let them talk. Just mute up the mic. Yes, sir. Appreciate I appreciate that, Corey. And uh, thank you, brother. But while you at it, uh, crush that mic button. You know what I'm saying? But look what it says here, that mute button. But look what it says here. It says uh, Psalms 22. Let's go right down here to 27. Look what it says here. It says, all the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord. And all the kindreds of the nations should worship before thee. Notice it says, all the ends of the world should remember and turn to the Lord, and all the kindreds of the nations should worship before thee. It says, for the kingdom is the Lord's, and his is the, I mean, and, and, and he is the governor among the nations. And I got one more scripture, and then I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, this is uh, Isaiah 25. What Isaiah 25 says. Uh, Let's go right here to Isaiah 25, and let's go to verse, uh, I think, 7. Look what it says here. Let's go to 6, matter of fact. It says, and in this mountain, and remember, keep in mind, Isaiah chapter 2 in Malachi, in reference to people coming to this mountain, the learning of the Lord. And in this mountain should the Lord of the hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the leaves of the fat things full of marrow, marrow, and of wines on the leaves well refined. And he will destroy in this mountain, watch what it says, the face of the covering cast over all people. That's what they need to be delivered to save from, from the masters over their face, the blindness. If our God's what we hid is hid to those that are lost, lost, who the God of this world have blinded them. It says the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. This is the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up in death. He will swallow up death in victory. That's uh, that, uh, Revelation 21, where he's going to take away death. It says, uh, death that passed upon all men. Not just Israelite. They ain't the only one dying. We all dying. You know what I'm saying? Who's that? He will swallow up death in victory. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces. Watch this. Psalms. 67 in play here. It's the only way you're going to get the uh, the rebuke taken up off of y'all when you do your job as an Israelite. It's supposed to be a holy nation of priests. you sitting up here being wicked among the nations. You know what I'm saying? Look what it says here. He will swallow up death and victory and the Lord will wipe away all tears from off all faces and the rebuke of his people should be taken away from off all the earth for the Lord has spoken it. So like that Psalm 67 says, when it get to the end the only way God is going to be merciful to an Israelite when he started doing his job of being a light to the nations. That's that first Peter chapter two, when it says how you're supposed to act among the nations. So when they, so when God can visit them in the day of visitation, that's that uh, Romans chapter 15. I'm gonna mute my mic. That's a cut, 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 cut. All right, everybody noticed he never answered any questions, but then demanded questions to be answered, right? Now, outside of that, he moved the goalpost. 
this was supposed to be about the identity of the Gentiles and salvation. And we defined it as being saved from your enemies and showed in context in the scriptures where this was referred to as Israel. And the only chapter that he goes to that he feels as though there's some sort of salvation is quoting Isaiah the 60th chapter. So let's just go back to Isaiah the 60th chapter. Then I'm going to address the whole Helen thing and just, you know what I'm saying, dead that for the evening, right? But if we go back to Isaiah 60, right? So the same thing with him talking about the gates being open and all this. Remember, when you read up in verse 10, and the sons of the strangers shall build up thy walls and their king shall minister, meaning what? Serve unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night. Remember, remember, this is, doesn't this sound familiar? It's the verse he read that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles that their kings might be brought. Verse 12, remember, those that's coming in is not coming in because the city is theirs. It's not coming in because they have equal citizenship. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. It's because they survived. Why did they survive? Because they weren't destroyed by the Most High in Christ and Israel because they were saved for tribute. You understand? Meaning that saved and salvation has context you have the salvation which is the promise for israel and you have nations which are just being spared for servitude as second class citizens not because they're attached to christ in any which way now let's continue reading inside this chapter because he kept saying what is it what is the city so verse 16 thou shalt also suck the milk of the gentiles and thou shalt suck the breast of the kings and thou shalt know that i am, i the lord am thy savior whose savior israel's and thy redeemer how do we know the mighty one of jacob so now we see that this salvation is talking about israel let's keep reading since he wanted to talk about the city so bad for brass i will bring gold and for iron i will bring silver and for wood brass and for stone iron and i will make thine officers peace and thy extractors righteous violence shall no more be heard in thy land whose land israel's land wasting nor destruction within thy borders but thou shalt call thy walls salvation and thy gates praise you know what i'm saying and then even when you go inside like the same chapter and we talk about revelations what heathens nation name was written on the gates Oh, 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 you mean there isn't one. So you mean these nations just come and drop their tribute off? You mean they, they just servants? You mean that they were the ones who submitted to the will of Israel and became their servants and servitude because Israel was spared from them and the tables have turned because that's salvation from God. That's salvation from the Most High. So now, notice that earlier, right? He said, oh, you didn't want to read the Strong's. First of all, just so y'all know, Strong's is not the ultimate authority. It's just a good reference point. But since I'm going to go there, this is this is the exact word. You know what I'm saying? G1671, Helen, right? Notice that there's two definitions, but they go in order from which one would have the greater context, right? So one, you notice he read the one that said a non-Jew. What he didn't read was a Greek either by nationality whether a native of the mainland or of the Greek island or colonies. So somebody's nationality is like your citizenship. Like somebody asks you your nationality today, you could say American, but there's Asian Americans. You know what I'm saying? There's real African Americans who actually came over here on a plane. So this is why not only did I give you the historical context, comparing it to what happened during the Hellenization period, you understand what happened under the Greeks, which is why the Greco-Roman Empire was ruling over Jerusalem when Christ was walking the earth. Like anyone ever asked why Romans came to arrest Christ? It's because Judas Maccabee made a deal with the Romans after they fought the Greeks who Hellenized his people. And the Romans broke their covenant too, broke their agreement as all of these devils do.
So this is why I mentioned the Zondervan and why I mentioned the Miriam Webster's because they know history that Laron doesn't know because he just wants to save his daddy. So for example, right? If I go once again and just read this verbatim as to what it said, Helen, Hellenist, a person living in Hellenistic times who was Greek in language, outlook, and way of life, but was not Greek in ancestry, especially a Hellenized Jew, which is why it fits the context purposely. And now the last thing before I land, you know what I'm saying? And this is basically put to bed now. And he's not going to answer any questions like the brother, dead man walking. Here's the point, right? I want y'all to know why he fights for the other nations so much, right? Is because he doesn't believe himself to be a Jew. So the only way for him to get God's grace, love, salvation, and mercy is if the Gentiles are other nations, because he does not understand this record. And he said, and 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 he said something earlier, right? And I know he's not going to answer this question either, right? Because if he does, it's it's the ultimate body bag. He says that we all died. We all came under the curse. You understand what? Because of Adam. Well, if every nation on this planet is equal, if everybody was under this curse, why did a Jew have to die? Why did an Israelite have to be put to death to reverse it? Oh, 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 that's what I thought. Because salvation's for us. As we've read in every single one of these scriptures in proper context, whether it was Luke, Romans, the Revelations chapter he pulled that was quoting salvation for Israel and the destruction of the nations in Isaiah, the 60th chapter. Bro, like, you done. I land. Hey, you want me to answer that question? Why does a Jew have to die for what you call? You want me to ask that question? Laurent, I don't. I don't really care what you do at this point. Like you, I, you, at I, this I, point, you, you at this, you just asked the question, right? At this point, you should be dismissed. Like, like you, like you, you sounded real sad. Up, you sounded. Real, I know you try. Now he trying to get me put off the stage. Now he's no, to, no, no. I was never get you put sad, off the stage. I'm, we, I'm we, saying, we saying that you covered it. in so much shame right now. I'm surprised that you're still here. All right, Shane. I'm, yeah, I'm, we we gonna we gonna kind of we gonna kind of um you know, kind of shut the conversation down, though. Um, we'll let you get a, um, you know, a couple minutes to kind of close out, let Cap get a couple minutes to close out, and then we'll move to Antonio, who's been very patient. All right, cool. I appreciate that. I appreciate you, brothers, once again, man. You brothers been real polite up here, you know, self-conscious. I act real stubborn towards me. But, yeah, uh, so once again, uh, this brother is 0-2. He would have been 0-3 when we, when we would have moved to uh, the Gentile uh, argument, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, I mean, uh, who is the Gentiles? And, uh, once again, he didn't ask, God never called the Israelites heathens, you know what I'm saying? He didn't answer that, you know what I'm saying? He don't believe Jesus is God, so, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So he lost that argument just as well, too, because if Jesus was not God, once again, God never called Israelites heathens because Jesus is not God, according to him. So then the second thing is this is, is, uh, is um, you know, uh, he, the second argument he made, you know, once again, we see that he admitted it. The Israelites, I mean, the non-Israelites can be saved. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he tried to, he tried to, he didn't want to go into the Greek and look at the, uh, the Greek word saved, which is the same word using the Israelites going to be saved. Uh, these non-Israelites going to have right to that tree for the healing of the nations. You know what I'm saying? They got to be healed. Death gonna be taken away. They're not gonna die either. You know what I'm saying? So they've been saved from death. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The second death, basically, and also, you know, you know. So, so I don't know what he was doing up in here. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, uh, uh, Katiza, um, your beard looked like a beaver tail, and I'm gonna uh, mute my mic. That boy ugly as hell. All right. So back to what we were saying, right? If you notice, once again. Even by his own admission, he would have said Christ is God. And then, therefore, you would have seen the Israelites being called uh, uh, heathens by his God. But he refused to answer that question. He admitted that he really, which I don't even understand why he thinks he's qualified to talk about the Bible. Since when I asked him about the dragon, he admitted, I don't really know. And in return, I had to begin to teach him. Until finally, oh, he remembered that these were other nations, but refused to answer if they were Israelites or not. Didn't answer any questions. 
and instead just danced around, moved the goalpost, quoted scriptures, you understand, out of order, out of context, you know what I'm saying? In which case, you've been absolutely destroyed on three offenses. We showed that the same Greeks that you pulled were Hellenized Jews, you understand? Showed that, uh, um, you know what I'm saying, salvation doesn't come until the other nations are destroyed where Israel was supposed to be redeemed and that these other nations are destroyed if they don't serve Israel because that's Israel's salvation and redemption. And you ignored every question that we asked. Brother, like, like you, you aren't even qualified for the conversation. As soon as you said, oh, I, I don't know, r r right then and there, you should have just yielded, sat back and said, you know what? Maybe I need to study more. You know what I'm saying? And it's okay not to know. You know what I'm saying? It is. It's it's okay. But it's a very prideful thing when you'll then continue on as if you do know after you already admitted defeat in your own argument. So I land. I right, appreciate both sides for